This is The Lockpicking Lawyer and it is Project Day here on my channel. Now if you've been following me over the last few weeks, you have seen me feature a number of gun locks. And unfortunately, the overwhelming majority of them fail at the basic, bare minimum task of stopping an unskilled adolescent from accessing the lock with non-destructive attacks. And that is, in my view, completely unacceptable. And a predictable question I got in the comments in pretty much every single one of those videos was, what gun lock do I recommend? So I went out looking for one that I could, in good conscience, recommend to you. And unfortunately, I was not able to find one. So I couldn't just leave it at that. I decided that I would make the perfect gun lock. So I sat down with some paper and started designing and I thought I came up with a pretty good plan. I even picked up some tool steel that I was going to make it out of and mapped out all of my cuts and bends and welds. And then I stopped and I realized that that project would not be very helpful to most of you. So I scrapped it and I decided that the project that you needed was how to build a gun lock or at least the best gun lock we can build out of easily available items and simple hand tools that most of you will have already. So this is what I came up with. We are going to build a gun lock out of a donor padlock and it really doesn't matter what it is. I chose an Abus 8850 because it's well sized for the task and it has the Abus Plus Core, which is extraordinarily difficult to pick. I have an extra long drill bit that is sized to match the shackle of the 8850. It's a 3 8 inch drill bit. And then I have a piece of marine grade heat shrink tube. I chose the marine grade because it is much thicker than normal heat shrink tube and it also has glue on the inside. And once this heat shrink tube goes over this drill bit, that glue will hold it in place and keep it from sliding around. One other thing that we, you can use is some Plasti Dip over this lock, and that'll be an optional step at the end. The tools that you'll need to build this are a Dremel, a torch, a vise, a small length of pipe, and one tool that will probably help but is not required is a drill. So let me lay out the basics of this project for you. We're gonna be building a gun lock designed to fit one of my favorite handguns, this 1911. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our donor padlock and we are going to cut the shackle off. We're going to cut it off so it is flush, so the retained portion is flush with the top of the lock body. That will leave us with a smooth top with one hole in it. And in the end product, this padlock will be situated right at the bottom of the grip. Then we're going to take our drill bit and we're going to round the end off with the Dremel. We're going to grind a groove all the way around right here that will allow it to be locked into this padlock. And then we're going to measure the exact correct spot where we're going to put a bend. So this will be, will be placed through the magazine tube all the way to the top and then make a 90 degree turn so it comes out the side of the ejection port. We'll then put this drill bit in the vise. We'll heat it up with the torch at that spot and we'll use a piece of pipe to bend it. We'll then cut off any excess that we have with a cutoff wheel on the Dremel and we will put our heat shrink tube over the finished product and and heat it so it, it locks on. The final optional step, of course, will be to plasti dip this lock. So we're gonna build this right now. I don't anticipate it's gonna take very long. I think this is a less than one hour project, but we're gonna give it a shot right now, see what it takes, and I'm gonna bring you along for the ride. Okay, we're down in the basement workshop and ready to start our project. Now, before I do start, I wanted to make one point to make sure it was perfectly clear and to head off the comments that I know I'm going to get about there being better ways to do what I'm about to do. I know that. And in fact, I probably have most of the tools that you're going to recommend that I use. The point of this project, however, is to use the fewest tools 
and to use the tools that are the most common. So we can place this project within everyone's reach. So first thing we're going to do is we are going to cut off the shackle of this padlock where the retained end will be flush with the top of the lock body. So let me get a marker here and mark our cut. Okay, it doesn't make the best mark, but I think we have it good enough. And we are going to use a Dremel with a cutoff tool to cut this shackle. Now, I know there's a better way to do it. If I was doing the best way, I'd probably use a cutoff grinder, a cutoff wheel on an angle grinder, but we are going to use the Dremel. So let's make sure I have this going the right direction. So the sparks are going to fly away from us. Get a pair of pliers so this doesn't get too hot for us to hold. And then we will get to cutting. It'll take a minute to get through what is a relatively thick shackle, particularly for something that we're cutting with a Dremel. Okay, we're making good progress, probably about a third of the way through. Okay, probably about the halfway point right now. Okay, let me turn this shackle a bit. Okay, we're almost through. Let me get a slightly different angle and we'll finish it up. Okay, we got through that. That was quite a journey. We actually ate away quite a bit of that cutoff wheel. And I think you're starting to understand why a better tool would probably be the angle grinder. So let's make sure that still fits in. And let's see. Get that at the exact right spot, and I think that'll work. Don't forget, we're going to be filling this in with some uh, Plasti Dip. Okay. Okay, the next step that we're going to have to take is figure out how to mark on the back of this drill bit exactly where we need to grind our little notch into the end of this drill bit. And we're going to use the lock to help us with that, hopefully. I'm going to stick it in and then turn it to the locked position, at least as far as I can. And hopefully that will press the ball bearing. Once I get this right. Okay, I think I've got this. The hope is that that will press the ball bearing against the drill bot, the drill bit and leave a mark on it. So I'm turning this key very tightly and then twisting this right here. And hopefully I'll have a mark where that ball bearing was and I think I've got it right about there. Okay, that's very, very good. Our next step is going to be to cut this off to a manageable length. And you know what, let's actually use the angle grinder this time so you have a good comparison of exactly how much faster it is to use the correct tool. So if you do have them, I encourage you to use them. Hold on, let me, let me plug it in and set this up. Okay, I've got the drill bit in the vise. We're going to cut it off right about here. The point of that being is I'll still have enough shank that I can use the rest of this as a regular drill bit. It won't be a total waste.
Okay, as you can see, that was a little bit faster than using the Dremel tool. So if you do have an angle grinder with a nice little cutoff wheel, it's definitely the way to go. Okay, since I cut the camera, I did a couple of things. First, I took that piece of drill rod and I've placed it in a drill. This is an optional step, but I think it's going to make the finished product look a little bit more clean, even, and more professional. You'll see what I mean in a minute. I've also replaced the head on my Dremel tool from the cutoff wheel to this little grinder wheel. This wheel is going to be used to grind a notch in the end of, of this drill rod that will allow it to be locked into this padlock body. So I'm going to place this off to the side here and hopefully this will work out as planned. I've never done anything quite like this before, so it should be interesting. Oh, one other point, I'm probably going to put a little round on the end of this right here, just to make it insert into the lock body a little bit more smoothly. Okay, I smoothed that over just a little bit. I should note this for you. This is a hardened steel rod. It's high speed steel. I do not want to anneal it. Annealing it would make this much, much easier to work and this grinder would cut through it a lot faster. However, re-hardening and tempering high speed steel is very difficult. The temper temperatures are in excess of a thousand degrees. So we're better off leaving it hardened and working with it in the hardened shape and using grinding tools rather than cutting tools. Uh-oh, almost lost our camera here. Okay, so let's see if we can start grinding that notch. Okay, stop for a little progress check. It's not cutting fast, but it is cutting a nice notch that's going to fit in with the ball bearing locking mechanism pretty nicely. It doesn't look like it's going to happen quickly though, so this may take a couple of minutes. Okay, I'm curious whether direction of my drill makes a difference. So I'm going to switch it around, see if it cuts any faster. Okay, looks like we are cutting a nice even notch here. I'm actually going to test it right now see if this will lock upright. Nope, we're not quite to the point where it locks up, but I do feel it engaging nicely, so this is gonna work out well. Let's get back to grinding. Okay, cutting slowly, definitely heating this up, but I do not worry about losing the temper at all. Like I said, the temper temperature of high-speed steel is extraordinarily high. No way we're gonna reach it doing what we're doing now. Okay, the notch is getting deeper. We're gonna test it once again. The goal is to take as little material as possible away and this thing still work. But while it does engage nicely, it's still not completely locking up. OK, 
Okay, still getting deeper and it's probably still not enough. If we compare it to the shackle that we cut off, hmm, let's see, still has a little bit deeper to go. Maybe another, another maybe one to two millimeters. Still not quite enough to lock up and I see that this is getting pretty hot. We're actually getting some color into the steel there. So let me get a little bit of water that we can dunk this into just to cool it off in the interim. Oh yeah, it's getting nice and hot. Okay, back to grinding folks. Okay, stop and test. Again, we don't want to take off too much material here. And we are not quite there. Okay, testing time once again. And still not there. This is going to be a nice deep notch. And I'm actually going to change out the bit we have here. Looks like I'm losing some shape there. And I want to keep this nice and rounded. Oh, that was hot. Okay, back to the grindstone. Testing time once again. And I think we're close, but not quite there. taken a lot longer than I had anticipated. Wow, it's almost identical to the notch in the shackle right now. So we must be very, very close. Okay, we can lock it, but it's pretty tight. So let me unlock it again. Uh-oh. Houston, we have a problem. <laughs> This thing is locked into place. Okay, let me cut the video, I'll figure this out, and we'll be back in just a moment. 
Okay, one broken key later, I am back with you and I got the lock off. Note to self, do not try to force these Abus Plus padlocks closed. Here's what's left of one twisted key. And unfortunately, that just leaves us one for our finished product, but lesson learned. Okay, let's get, get a little bit more ground off of this. Okay, let's test this out again. And there we go, that is absolutely perfect. Okay, I'm going to get a little bit of sandpaper and maybe we will smooth this out. I have some 500 grit, I think that should work out nicely. And I'm just gonna wrap it around that little piece of drill bit I cut off and sand this smooth. Cool this off a little bit. I think that's good enough for our purposes. Okay, let me get this out. Our next step is going to be to measure where we are going to put our bend in this. Okay, I'm back with you and we are ready to take the most important measurement of the whole project. And that is where to bend this long steel rod. We're gonna do that by inserting it into the gun as it would be inserted in the final product. Being very careful not to scratch your gun up because we don't have any plastic on this yet. Then we're going to scribe a mark where we want the center of this cut to be. And I don't know where my scribe is, I just looked everywhere. So I am using a dental pick. Hopefully I'll be able to see this once I get this off. Okay. Now the important part to note here is that we are going to want a good deal of that bend to be inside of the gun when this gun is locked up. That's because to bend this rod we're going to have to heat it up to red hot. We're going to totally blow the temper for about a half inch on either side of that bend. So we want that portion of the lock to be protected by being inside of the gun. If someone wants to cut it or grind that unhardened portion away they're going to have to cut or grind into the firearm itself. So let's get this in the vise now that I have this marked up and get the torch out and get ready for our bend. Okay, I think I have everything set up. We have our piece of drill rod in the vise. I have my plumbing torch right here. This is a normal map gas torch. It is more than enough to get this, this rod hot enough to bend. And then once we get it up to temperature, I have a small piece of steel pipe ready. I'm going to put it over the end and use this as leverage to put about a 90 degree bend in this. So let's light this torch up and get to work.
Okay, we have our drill rod bent, so let's just let that cool down and we'll check our fitment. Okay, everything's cooled down, so let's check to see how this fits. We would install this lock normally by pushing it straight down from the top of the firearm. You can see it comes out the bottom of the magazine well. Then we would put our padlock body over it and lock it up. And it seems like there is, I don't know, I'll say about a quarter inch of play. A bit of that's going to be taken up by the rubber coating on this, this drill rod, and a bit of it's going to be taken up by the rubber coating on the padlock body. So I'd say we made that bend just about perfect. So let's start with getting a rubber coating on this drill rod. Okay, everything fits, so it is time to put our plastic coating on. This is 3 8 inch marine grade heat shrink tube. The marine grade, of course, means it's a little bit thicker, and it also has some glue on the inside. I am a little bit concerned about whether or not this will make that 90 degree turn because it is pretty tight to the tube. However, if it doesn't, I have a little bit of white lithium grease on standby right next to me and a little bit of that on the corner should probably do the trick. So let's see what we got here. And as suspected, that's not making the turn very well. Let's, uh, let's lube it up just a bit. Okay. Hopefully that'll make a difference. If not, we'll figure something else out. Okay, definitely just made the turn a lot easier. It's not easy, but it's working. Mm. Okay, I think we're in good shape here. I have a little bit of overhang here, that's good. I'll cut off what I don't need after I shrink it. It's uh, not quite as nice as I'd like it to be on the, on the bend there, but we'll see how that looks after the heat shrink goes. Okay, we want about, about an inch from the bottom is what I previously measured. So let me get a razor and cut right where we need. Okay, let me cut the excess off the bottom of that now. Okay, let me make sure that still locks in place. There we go. Okay, that looks good, and we have a little bit of extra room for the plasti dip that'll be on the lock body, so I think we're in pretty good shape. Yeah. Okay, let me get the torch out, and we will shrink this tubing onto our new shackle. Okay, I have my torch on about as low as it gets. I don't even know if you can make that flame out. Let's see. Can barely see that it's on and we're gonna get to permanently attaching this heat shrink tubing the point here is to be really really easy with your heat you don't want to overheat it because the stuff will burn but you do need to get it hot enough to melt the glue on the inside I don't know if I have quite enough heat here. Let me see. No, I don't think that's getting quite hot enough. Nope, we need some more fire. Okay, got a little bit more fire here. 
Again, be very, very careful not to overheat this stuff. Okay, I see a little bit of shrinkage now, so we're on our way. Slow and steady is the name of the game here. Don't burn it. And I think we're almost there. That's starting to feel pretty good. It's on there tight. Do a little bit more to make sure we're where we need to be. And I think that will do the trick. Okay, let me turn this off. And next step, Plasti Dip. Okay, we're pretty much at the last step now, and that is to dip our lock body in Plasti Dip. I have some red colored Plasti Dip here, and a note about this stuff before we open the can up. No matter how many times it may say on the can or in the advertisement that this stuff will keep, it does not. It dries out fast, and it's really a shame to use a whole can when we are only planning to dip a little lock body. So if you have anything else you want to dip at the same time, some tools, some screwdriver handles, anything, get them ready, do it all at the same time. Otherwise, your Plasti Dip will go to waste. Okay, now the lock. I did a few things to get it ready for dipping. We're going to dip it only to about an eighth of an inch from the bottom there. And we had to cover a few holes up to cover, let's see, we have this hole right here, a little piece of tape over it, that's where our shackle goes. Then the retained end of the shackle, which we cut off, I put some hot glue in front of. And finally, there's a little drain hole in there that I also put some hot glue in. So to hold this while we're dipping, I'm gonna put the key halfway in and then turn it. So that should be able to, to give us a good hanging position. So. Let's, uh, let's open this can up and get to dipping. Mm. Okay, there's that wonderful Plasti Dip smell. And let's do our dip. Okay, I think that does it. We just have to leave that there to dry. I'm gonna leave it overnight and I'll come back to you tomorrow morning. So this project took a little bit longer than I, than I thought since we started, since I shot the intro, it's probably been a little bit over an hour now and we'll have a little bit more time while we're waiting for that plastic to dip to dry, but all in all, not too long. So. Let's let this guy dry and we'll see how it turned okay, out. It has been roughly 24 hours since the last clip and a couple of things have happened since then. First, we allowed the Plasti Dip to dry and actually put one more coat on because one coat was looking just a little bit too thin. After the second dried, I cut a hole in the Plasti Dip on the top and removed the tape that was covering the shackle hole. So now we can insert the locking bar into the body. I think that means this lock is done, so we are ready to test this out on the gun that this lock is intended to secure. To install it, we simply take the locking bar, insert it through the ejection port, down the handle and out the bottom of the magazine well, then take our lock body, insert it over the bar, 
turn the key, and your gun is locked up. Now, it may not be pretty, but what you have here is a lock that you can have some confidence will be able to stop curious teens and adolescents from accessing it using non-destructive attacks. As far as destructive attacks go, well, nothing's going to defend against that if someone is willing to take out the Dremel or the grinder. So what do we have invested in this thing? As far as time goes, I still think this is a roughly one hour project if you exclude drying time. I spent a little bit longer because I was setting up cameras and preparing to document all of this for you. As far as money invested, it's a roughly $50 project, though that can vary quite a bit depending on the donor padlock you use. I use the ABUS 8850, which can be found on the internet for about $30 to $35. Then we have a drill bit, which is going to be about $5, certainly no more than $10. And then the Plasti Dip and heat shrink tube, another $5 to $10. So I think this can be completed for under $50. And what you will have at the end is a gun lock that is better than anything that you can buy. So I think that's all we have for this. It's been a very long video. If you're still with me, thank you for hanging on. If you have any questions or comments, please put them below. If you like this video and would like to see more like it, please subscribe. And as always, have a nice day. Thank you.